Okay, to set up your scene, we're going to need a few things. Uh, we're going to need plastic tubing for the weather effects. Your car, you want to try to stick with a 1 to uh, 24 scale. It's going to give you the most detail. Uh, die cast makes excellent cars, model cars. You can find them anywhere, hobby store, um, Walmart, wherever you can buy them. This thing to lay out the snow, a flower for the snow. Uh, I put cement, cement mix I got at the hardware store. I mixed it up, I already pre-put it down. Um, it's real cheap, it's not too hard. You just buy a bucket, cement, lay it down, and it's easy to throw away. You can break it up with the, with the chisel when you're done, just break it up and throw it away. It doesn't make too much of a mess. The flower is the most messiest part. But uh, when thinking of a scene, you want to uh, just try to think of it beforehand and just stick to the plan and keep going with it. And uh, some adjustments will be made along the way. And um, then as you get further into post, you start matching them all together and you can start, it may not always come out how you originally planned, but it, it, but the more you mess with them, the more you can get something that looks, looks pretty close. So uh, let's get started instead of the scene. Okay, we want, let's see here. So the car is be, this doesn't really matter. That. Um, you just kind of want to stick to like a road, so you probably want the snow on the side. It's kind of what I had. Because eventually, what it's going to be is going to be the car driving this way. I'm going to be blowing some uh, with the, the, the tube. I'm going to be blowing the, the, the snow out this way. Then behind here is going to be the backdrop, which we decided, which I'm going to decide to post what to put on. I'm thinking right now, I'm thinking of mountains with snow. But that may change once we get to that part. But uh, Flower. Start setting it up. Now, it's going to come out in chunks, and that's what you want to avoid. Uh, we can flatten it out later, but you can get kind of crazy on the edges here. Okay, another trick you can do, you can do it blowing on it, but you want, to act, you want it to look like there's drifts kind of coming up. Just sprinkling it, you see kind of clumps everywhere, and you don't want that. You generally don't want that. I mean, it can't look all right, I suppose, but the drifts make it look a little bit more real. You get a blow on it. It's kind of hard, kind of sticks, or you can use this. So again, it gives a texture as winds come across the, across the snow. It may not look like much, but everything you do adds up in the end to make it more of a realistic scene. Um, another thing I haven't mentioned yet, there is going to be dry ice being used, which I'll explain why here once we get to that part. Dry ice, uh, luckily my local grocery store sells it. Um, it's about $6 a pound. You only need probably about a half a pound. It's not super expensive, but uh, yeah, and I'll explain why. If you can't get dry ice, you can use cigarette smoke or smoke or vape smoke or whatever, but um, the dry ice is definitely the best way to go. But all right, now we're going to do a little bit of the car. Um, the tricky part is, okay, you're going to put the car in the snow, but it's not going to be much on there because the car is going to be driving. Um, so again, dirties up your car, but it is what it is to use the... It's, and if you get it inside the car, it's pretty tough to get out. So I mean, it's, it's whatever. I don't know if you can see that, but it, it provides the texture of the wind blowing on the. It's not bad. All right. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do tire tracks. It's, it's not real thick, you can't see it real well, but they're there, so. Now, here's what you have to think of. The further back you can make this model, usually the better, because that gives you more uh, distance. Uh, 
the depth of field, but it, 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 it allows you, it looks more real the further you can go back. Um, I went not extremely far back, but I think it's enough to serve the purpose. But, um, and this edge, you got to remember, is going to be where you're going to crop it up here and on the back. Now, to do the backdrop, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can cut it out. When I get to post, I'll show, but you can either cut it out and just have this section uh, and masking out the back and you can just plop something in. What I like to do, especially some of these winter ones, is I will throw a white backdrop and we can plop um, a, uh, a backdrop to it. It's pretty easy. Um, there's different blending modes you can use to make it look pretty real. And yeah. And the uh, dry ice, what we use the dry ice for is it provides, we throw the dry ice in the fog, we'll come back here and it blends, it makes it so it, can make the, it makes the background blend uh, way better into the background. Uh, in post, it makes it a lot easier. It doesn't look so. It doesn't look so sharp. Um, you can just kind of blend it right in. It looks really good. You can use cigarette smoke as one way to do it, or you can use vape smoke, and you just blow it and do it. It's a, it's a little harder to control. The the dry ice comes down and smoothly covers the back. Um, but like, however, if you don't have access to that, uh, uh, any type of smoke works as well too. Okay, so I'm a lighting setup. I have my strip box up here provide an overshadow and my rear light to come from the side. I do have a strobe light I'm not going to use. Um, the reason I'm not going to use the strobe light on this particular setup is because when I blow the snow, you're going to be able to see this. When you use softboxes, continuous light is going to leave motion blur in the snow and that's what I want. Um, if I use the strobe, it's going to make the uh, flower look a lot more sharper and clearer and I don't want that. I want the motion blur in the snow to make it look like there's movement going on. Um, to get the lighting, uh, you're just going to have to play around with it. Um, this is not going to be a simple setup light up uh, setup that I'm using. There's plenty of tutorials on YouTube for those. There's one light setup toy tutorial tutorials. There's lot, lots of them out there. This is going to be more of a studio setup um, to get the effect that I'm going for. So if you have lighting, that would make uh, more equipment you have, the easier this is. Um, I luckily have a decent amount of stuff to make this uh, go as smoothly as possible. And we will get set up with the first um, effect, which is going to be the uh, snow blowing. Um, that'll be the first thing that we do. Okay. So use your strainer. We're gonna do the tubing, and I don't know if this is gonna work. Sometimes you do these effects, and they don't always work. You have to post like, wait a minute, this does, this is not working. So, um, but we'll still do it. Uh, it'll be back up. Uh, the point is, we're gonna try to have. We already did the wind blowing, like the environmental uh, snow. But now this time, our goal is to have the snow blowing directly from the back of the car. That's why we use this tube. Dip in the flower, blow it, bam, done. So we will try this. See how this works. It doesn't always work. This causes a big mess. And it's, it's, it takes about an hour to clean up. This is going to make blending with the background much easier. And that's cool.
Alright, well, you get the point. Okay, so here we are in post. Uh, we've got all of our images that we took. Uh, we will be flipping through these to see which ones we want, which ones we don't want. Um, of course, this doesn't look like much now, but we will fix it. I'm guessing um, the crop is going to be a little bit further out than that, but somewhere along those lines. Uh, that's kind of a problem, but I think we can fix Yeah, we can fix that. We'll just uh, mask that out and uh, clone it. But um, Okay, let's see. Uh, this one's probably going to be pretty good. You can't real see it with the white background that well, but... Um, yeah, you can barely see this. Boom. There it is, folks. We are 100% getting that one. We're going to mark it. That's going to be <clears throat> pretty good. Uh, let's see. We can do, I think we can do this one. We might just use this as a reference, uh, the main the main one, it's not really there, you can't really see it, um, but... Okay, we want something in the background, we don't really want it too much on the car. I think this one for sure. Um, let's think, yeah, let's just get this one too. We can do that one, and... Uh, we can do that one in case we need to run, if we need something on the bottom here. So, um, the snow, um, if we used a black backdrop, which we, uh, maybe I should have, we would have been able to see that, that, uh, snow a lot better. I thought we might be able to, but apparently not, but that's okay. The point is you could change this to a, uh, back black drop and I could have used just the one I had back there and you would have been able to see that a lot better. Uh, for my idea though, for the, the backdrop is going to be a lot easier to do. So anyhow, um, that's perfectly fine. We will take these pictures and we're gonna bring them over to Photoshop and open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, here we are. And we're going to, all right, this gets a little, uh, let's figure out how to do this. Um, if this gets too long and extensive, I can trim this part up and uh, skip through but it's kind of important um i think we're gonna use this one as our main our main the top uh so this is how we okay let's think okay we want this one for sure we want that we want this one for sure so we're going to i'm going to i'm going to assume that you know photoshop pretty well um like I said, there's extensive tutorials on simplified toy photography, like a one light setup, um, and it's pretty basic. There's plenty of them on YouTube. This is going to be a little bit more in depth as far as it's going to be a little bit more advanced. Um, I'm not going to go over the too far uh, in the keys. I'm going to be brushing this out uh, to get um, to get this the back blast here out. Uh, let's see. Let's get my Let's start with my flow is going to be 25%. Uh, I get that uh, back bl black brush and we're going to start painting this in. Actually, you know what? Before we do this, we're going to crop this. Push this. We might. Yeah, I think I can fix. I can fix this. This part over here, I can clone that out. But that looks like a pretty decent. Uh, that's, yeah, that's decent. Uh, we probably run it right in the middle since this is very subject oriented. I don't think we need to go on the th rules of third. I think the middle will work for uh, this particular idea. Uh, we're going to brush this out. We want to get these lines away. Okay, so let's see what the next one has. Um, this is going to have you can't. I don't know if you can be able to see it, but it does have more up, uh, more um, some snow up here. So we're going to want that. So we're going to want to brush up here on this one, black, 
and we're going to want to do this one below. Okay, so we're going to want, all right, this requires a lot of masking and a lot of toying around. So we're going to have to do, okay, this we want to make this all black. Because the only part, the only part we need this third one for is up in the upper right hand corner. So we wipe that out. And this is going to allow us Here comes the fog. Okay. All right. Let's see. I don't know. Okay. Oops. It's some of this is a little tedious and it requires a lot of fiddling around. But you will get it eventually. My mic went out during the recording of this, so I'm going to speed this up and try to talk about it. But the backdrop with the trees, I'm just masking it out. Um, I do put a black and white a clipping mask onto the backdrop to blend it in as a wintry white, almost like a whiteout. Um, and I do levels adjustment to this. Um, I just carefully mask it out. I try to blend it into the um, to the fog. That was the point of the fog. So you take the uh, backdrop and you blend it in uh, to the uh, the horizon line. And the, and the fog just does it seamlessly. makes it look real good. And um, Okay, um, next I'm going to put some snow overlays on top. Uh, the snow didn't turn out exactly how we wanted, but that's okay. Um, the snow overlays I got at rgdedu.com. Um, that's not an ad. That's where I got. They provide fantastic overlays. Really high quality. Uh, and I just kind of mix and match some different ones on there to give the background. And it's pretty simple. You just change them to screen, put them on there, make the adjustments how you need them. The, um, and it's starting to look, starting to come together uh, fairly well at this point. At this point, I, I uh, mask out the bottom of the car. There's some toy clips on there. And I just use them between, going back and forth between a uh, clone tool and a healing brush tool. Uh, let's see. Next, I do. I put some a spin blur on the tires um, to give it a little bit of a uh, motion, some uh, a little bit more life to the photo. Pretty easy. You just go to a. Uh, you have to do a control or shift, control shift alt e to merge all the layers, and then you do it. You do it on that layer. And this is when I start to color grade. Trying to find the right color grade is. Uh, it's a lot of small tweaks to get there not there's no one answer to this it's just kind of do it how you want to you feel like doing it um after this sharpen I, w I go ahead and do a camera raw filter i do a, another control shift alt e to merge the layers and i'm going to find a uh, preset which these are a free preset i don't remember where i found them i found them somewhere just a bunch of them uh you want to kind of you can add it to this uh, merge layer and you can kind of blend it into your main comp um, it's just all about, like, again, small adjustments. Just keep applying the very small adjustments to get more contrast. This is a trick I do. I, uh, co solid color. I apply image, uh, apply the image to the color and I add it to just the shadows by putting a control L on the, on the, uh, mask and layer. And I apply just blues to the shadows to give it kind of that cooler look. Go back to Lightroom, uh, Nix effect or Nick's uh, collection and yeah, I think I messed up there. Uh, I add a few things. I add a dark and light and or light and dark and the light darken, add a glow to soften the shadows. I go ahead and add a high key pass and a low key pass. You don't necessarily have to do that, but you can add a little punch to them, a little contrast. And they do a tonal co tonal contrast to kind to it really uh, gets more definition on the shadows for you a little bit more lifelike I like doing it but just just small though not nothing too crazy then I go to the Nix the collection 2 and play around in light leaks that might look good I don't I think I use one here uh, very minor I add a small blur 
motion blur, nothing too crazy, just very, very tiny. I'm just toying with it to make sure it looks good where I want to place it. And add a little vignette. Then I do a little bit more cropping. Then that should be about it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, watch the final touches. Um, follow me at Instagram at Flying the Donut. And see you next time.